Here we go for the second straight year. The season opener of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series kicks off in the USA from the historic Boston Harbor and the Seaport District where the diving platform is built from the iconic Institute of Contemporary Art. Check that out. And as always, alongside Red Bull Cliff Diving expert Joey Zuber, happy birthday, buddy. I'm Trace Worthington <laughs> on a rainy, cold, and gusty day here in Boston. And if Joey, well, Joey, if cliff diving isn't difficult enough, try it in weather like this. I know, right? <laughs> well, that's Boston for you. Mother Nature has thrown a little curveball for us here today, but I think it's the big gusts of wind on that exposed platform that will be the most challenging for the athletes today. Yeah. Today, Boston USA sets the tone with hosting the first of six stops. Then we head back to Paris, France, right in front of the Eiffel Tower for stop number two. One of the all-time favorites, Pugnano Amare, Italy, takes on stop number three, then a brand new location for this season. Takachio Japan makes the list. A series classic in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge for stop number five. And then finally in November, we drop right into the city of Auckland, New Zealand, which is another new location to host the World Series. Quite the season on tap. And all points count towards the total. Every dive counts. Four dives total in every competition. We're going to check out the fourth and final round here in Boston, kicking it off with the men. Catalan Preda warming up in the lounge right there. Usually the divers, Joey, are on top near the platform, but not today. They're staying warm. No, no, no. They need to stay as warm for as long as possible, and you'll see them rugged up. They'll stay in those sweaters right before the moment they get on the platform. Got to keep those muscles nice and limber. Good Molly morning, Carson, smile on her face as always. Isn't this a beautiful day for <laughs> Diving. Last season didn't disappoint. We had rising oh young goodness. generation of divers, including right. her. And uh, so let's take a look back at 2022. Ooh. It was a big season. The 2022 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series went down as one of the most spectacular to date, with the new guard challenging the series veterans. Oh, Aiden Hislop! That just happened. Stellar diving by Molly Carlson. But with the most experienced divers still prevailing. Remarkable, incredible, graceful, dynamic, and brilliant. Rhiannon Ifland, now a six-time World Series champ, and Gary Hunt, with 10 titles to his name, clearly have the bullseye on their backs. With competition getting tighter by the year, 2023 promises to be the next step in Red Bull cliff diving's evolution. Rhiannon Iflin right there, six-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, trying to stay warm on top of the building right here. And it is going to be an interesting competition with this weather and the wind. Not going to be easy for the divers. And I'll tell you what, neither Hunt nor Iflin seem to be slowing down. There's Gary right there. Both have run the tables for years and are still hoping to fend off the rising young stars. Let's hear what they had to say about guarding their titles. I'm definitely ready for this season. It's uh, going to be a special one for me. I'm uh, leaving the season next year to concentrate on my goal of getting to the Olympics. So uh, I'm giving these young guns one last shot to beat me. The end goal is defending that title, you know, going for number seven. But I, I really just want to be out there and I want to, I want to be competitive. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the thing. I think for myself, like focusing on that end goal too much doesn't really always work for me because it's just too much noise in my head and too much uh, weight on my shoulders. To be a champion again, I think I'm going to have to be more consistent than I was last year. I had some ups and downs, 
and um, the others, uh, the, uh, the other divers really had a, a chance to beat me. They, they didn't manage to do it, but they gained a lot of experience. Uh, but I'm gonna keep the, the bar high, I'm gonna stay consistent, and make sure that if they make a mistake, I'm gonna take it. Taking next season off, gonna go for the Olympics in Paris. I know. He's not going to hit the 100, 100 competitions. <laughs> He's competed in every single tour stop. Oh, the men. The, uh, yeah, the men. The men will kick things off. They're staying warm right now. Chilly weather today in Boston. There are four rounds of diving. Three have already been completed as we look at the American right there getting ready. And much better weather yesterday. Let's take a look back at the men's previous rounds. Joey, who has it going on here at the season opener? Uh, round one, this is Catlin Preda taking the lead at this point. Look at that graceful magic dive. Hold that fly. Then we transfer over to round two, Aiden Heslop confirming his front runner status. We'll take the lead after round two this time. You can see those beautiful sunny conditions. And how about Carlos Jimeno? Currently sitting in third position with this epic back arm set, four and a half somersaults, seeking his first ever podium. Another lead change, round three this time, Konstantin Popovich absolutely focused and ready at the first stop here in Boston. Look at that dive, one of the most difficult maneuvers the world is currently seeing. And the Boston Knights out in form. They don't care about the cold weather. That's what we want to see. 10,000 fans on hand. The American we saw earlier, James Lichtenstein, is the top American. And he was fourth after three rounds of diving. For those new to the World Series, here's how it goes down. Eight men and eight women are permanent divers for the 2023 season. Four wild card divers are added to every stop for a total of 24 athletes. Okay, it's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. Now, it's only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point, the position in the air, and trace, of course, that critical water entry. It's going to be interesting today with that win. The scoring is straightforward. Five judges present a score between 0 and 10. The low and high scores, they are scratched. So the remaining three, they're multiplied by the DD, the degree of difficulty equaling the total score. So clearly, Joey, the more flips, the bigger you go, the higher you go, whatever, the bigger the DD, the bigger the score. That's right. At every World Series stop, four total dives make up the final score and points are awarded at each stop. Then those points are added together, which go toward the World Series standings. And now this season in 2023, 10 additional overall World Series points will be rewarded for the best dive performed at each tour stop. We'll see that later. Interesting. And similar to, let's say, the Championship League trophy or maybe the Stanley Cup, whatever you're into, the King Kong Healy Trophy is awarded at this season's end to the top male and female cliff divers on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And there's a guy who's highly capable of earning the King Kong Healy Trophy. That is Konstantin Popovich of Romania the leader after three rounds. That guy is in really good shape coming into this season. Absolutely. He's looking on fire, in form, in shape, and determined. And there are the judges, led by Olivier Monot-Ricard of Canada. He's the head judge. Ginger Hubert joins us for the first season. She's the first woman on the World Series to ever score a perfect 10 in a competition. Simon Latimer, Marion Reif, and Surreal is also here. So, weather getting better. I mean, it was gusting earlier. But not great. <laughs> but not great. So it'll help a little bit. But remember, those pla that platform right there, the men's platform you see, 90 feet off the water, 27 meters. The women's, 21 meters, 70 feet. So 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit into the Boston Harbor. It is chilly. In fact, the water might be a little bit warmer than the outside uh, weather right now. That's a first. <laughs> yeah, that's a first. <laughs> and so after... Rounds three and going into four, here's the start list. So it's in reverse order from the lowest scores from the first previous three rounds to the highest scores in the end. So Sergio Guzman will kick things off and then Gary Hunt in the middle of the field, followed by Catalan Preda. James Lichtenstein, as I mentioned, the top American. 
and he will run into that top four. Carlos Jimeno diving great, Aiden Heslop who won here last year, and then Konstantin Popovich will be the final diver on the men's side as he has the top highest score after three rounds of diving. You can see the flag right there blowing Joey, and it's a little protected in this area in the harbor, but not much, especially when you're walking out onto that platform. Again, yeah. break that down, you know, that is 90 feet, 27 meters off the water. Pretty exposed, it's normally a lot windier the higher you go. Sergio Guzman ramping up the crowd. So when you're down at ground level, fairly calm, but up top, definitely a lot more gusty, but we're in that little harbor, that little pocket. We've got some buildings to the left and to the right. Should protect the athletes a little. I hey. love this, I love yeah, this. this. I mean, awesome. these guys need it right here. They need the crowd to pump them up. Sergio Guzman, the 32-year-old Mexican diver, a last-minute wild card entry because Blake Aldridge of the UAKS UK suffered an injury. So Guzman filling in. Many divers twisting divers. Joe, we've talked about that with Guzman before, but he's more of a flipping diver. We'll get into that in a minute. But what is this dive that he's going to do? So check this out. Back four somersaults in the tuck position. So as you said, he's a flipper, not a twister. <laughs> so it's a bit of a duel. They this all flip. No, but this is going to be an interesting competition. This will be the duel between the flippers and the twisters. Slap of the thigh, getting ready. Check this dive out. Safety divers making sure everything's okay. Give it a little splash for some contrast in the water. They're also there to protect the diver when they hit. You'll see that momentarily. exciting to watch his reactions are always great and as we talked about before it's about flipping versus twisting you've got to play to your strengths you've got to do things that you feel more comfortable doing so let's remember remember let's face it they're 90 feet up traveling at 85 kilometers per hour that's around about 50 wow. 52 kilometers per hour watch his head flick back trying to count the somersaults the athletes in the flipping dives are going to try to get a glimpse of the water every time they pass by that's their orientation point. You've got to count the somersaults. If you miss it, it doesn't always go to plan, and he's had a pretty bad landing in the past, but this time, A-OK. -okay. Bunch of eights across the board in one eight and a half by Marno Ricard of Canada. He'll drop that in an eight, so he'll keep three of them. So he'll roll up when adding all four together for a 341.50. So Sergio Guzman kicking off the fourth and final round for the men. has a smile on his face as we go back to the top now. The ICA building, the Institute of Contemporary Art. Loving the glass, such a beautiful building. Those big, long pillars holding the platforms. 90 feet, 27 meters off the water is the men's platform. Miguel Garcia upgrading from a wild card diver in 2022 to a permanent diver in 2023. And Joey, a coach that now has been focusing more on his own diving. That he has been. This is where the nerves start to ramp up. You've got to visualize the dive. He's telling the scuba divers to splash, and so the splash is helping the athletes see the surface of the water. Let's break the myth, let's bust the myth. It does not make the water softer. <laughs> not from those speeds or those heights. Here we go. A running takeoff, a little bit of a splash on that landing there. And you can break that down, Joey, what that means. Execution versus a big splash. But nevertheless, the 32-year-old Colombian putting one down in the harbor. But folks, this is a brand new dive for Miguel Garcia. He tried it out in Fort Lauderdale. They had the World Aquatics High Diving World Cup over there. Debuted that dive. And as you said earlier, 
He's decided to push aside the coaching so he can focus on his diving. He's, he said to me a few weeks ago, this is my chance. I've really just got to focus and put all my energy into cliff diving to see what kind of results I can get. And that's the right thing to do. And he's really looking in good form. Just an over rotation there. And that can stem from being a little too powerful on takeoff. So a little disappointed for Miguel Garcia. But nonetheless, he's a brave man. So we get all four dives count. So here are the scores for that, that fourth and final dive, a 73-5-0. Adding all four together, it's a 327-6-0. So Guzman still in the lead. Orlando Duque giving him a few hints right there. Our Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series sports director, fortunate to have the legendary Orlando Duque in that role. 13 world titles, winner of nine Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series competitions. Jonathan Paredes, he focuses at the top. He's coming up shortly. You can see the rooftop there and set to go on the platform. 90 feet, 27 meters above the Boston Harbor is Alexei Prigorov, the 35-year-old diver from Ukraine. You know what, folks, there's always one athlete who you've been, uh, you know, looking at a long time. He's always so close to the podium. He's never stood on the podium. He's been so close. So if you're looking to root for somebody to be on the podium today, here's your guy. That's right. And second highest degree of difficulty. On the screen to the left, you'll always see the tariff. It's pretty high up, 5.4. He's going to run towards the end of the platform. He needs as much power and rotation as possible. He goes quick. Oh. Oh, heavy landing on that one. Prigorov of Ukraine. Now, Joey, do you get more points for a running takeoff, or is that just a preference? No, that is basically to try and help the divers try and get more height from the platform and more rotation. So these particular dives, you need as much power as possible. You know, front four somersaults, two and a half twists. You've got to go for it with everything you've got. But sometimes what happens in competitions, you have a lot of adrenaline. It's quite common that the divers will overcook their dives. They're full of power before the competition. Really, there's adrenaline in, in cliff dive. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a tad. Just a little just bit. Just a few nerves. But what that does is when you're getting hyped up for the competition, yeah. sometimes you just give it too much gas. And he had, well, not a lot of choices at the end of the dive. Big splash, big over rotation. He could have put his arms up, but he would have got a, a big penalty. A bit of a shame for Alexei Prigorov. Tough sport. 35 years old. He'll get a 59 on that dive. So third place right now, 325.55. Once again, all four dives. There were three yesterday in much better weather. It was sunny. In fact, 30 degrees warmer uh, yesterday, Fahrenheit. And uh, you can see why they're warming up in the hot tub down there as they look up to the top for the next diver. is Mexico's Jonathan Paredes, 33 years old, a veteran of cliff diving, who many look up to. In fact, you can ask any diver, if you could land or enter the water like anyone, who would it be? 90% of the divers would answer. Literally 90%, I want to land in the water like Johnny Paredes. Textbook, Barani, will explain the Barani after the dive. But he's so exquisite, so well-timed, especially those final moments before the entry seems to really understand what to do at the right time. Johnny comes into this season for the first time in his career as a wild card diver, so he needs to have a good competition here and maybe earn a permanent diver status for the rest of the season. Here we go. Paredes, there you go. What do we call him, Joey? The Rip Master. The Rip Master. And that's why, right there, you saw a few heavy landings from the first three divers. Johnny Paredes slicing through the water here in the Boston Harbor. Doing a great job under these conditions. So sometimes you'll see the athletes falter a little when it's cold and windy. So you have to be very strong mentally. He's looking really in good form. We saw him at the previous competition for the kickstart of the season. Looked in really, really, really good form. The back triple, triple here. So two and a half twists. You've got to get the moment just right. Coming out of the twist, digging deep into the pike position. He looks at the water here. This is the Barani, front somersault, half twist. 
and you need to see the water right to the very end to make those adjustments, okay? I spoke with him last week, Joey. He said he's okay with the wild card diver position. He really wants to focus on quality diving, it's not results. But, you know, this is like telling a, a quarterback that's been a, quarter, a starting quarterback for 10 years to sit on the bench for a year. So Johnny has been taking this very well, very mature, and it's good to see. And his diving is definitely improving from event to event. He's looking sharp, though. He's come into this, uh, this season looking in good form. He is. So Paredes, fourth round dive. Remember, we are in the fourth round, and all of them count. So on that dive, he gets a 117.30, moves into the lead with a total of 393.75. He's very good friends with Orlando Duque and the crew. Johnny Paredes putting one down. The wind still gusting around a little bit. Listen to this crowd now, 10,000 strong for Mr. David Colturi of the United States. Celebrating his 60th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Dealt with an injury last year, a couple different ones, including a shoulder injury. He's coming back from that strongest he's ever been in his life right now. Reverse two somersaults, four twists. siblings are here, Jason, Julie, and Amy. His parents, Tom and Denise, are here. Nieces, nephews, uncles, cousins, they're all here to watch David dive today. I'm so impressed with David Culturi. It's only about nine or 10 months ago he had shoulder surgery. He actually injured his shoulder, hitting the water just like that. He had one arm just coming out, Don't and the picks. water just pulled his arm up. What a beautiful jump. Let's look at the twist here. He's got such a great technical twist. Perfect time to come out. And then watch this here. So how he injured his shoulder was right here, coming into the water, and the arm was just out in front a little bit, just ripped his arm upwards, and then completely tore the rotator cuff, highlighting how tough the impact is. Look at the score. Oh, I just love it. Nines across the board and one nine and a half. So he'll lose a nine and a nine and a half. He'll keep three nines multiplied by the degree of difficulty of 4.6. So on that dive, 124.20, moves over the 400 mark and moves into the number one spot, 40370 for David Colturi of the United States. It's Gary Hunt, tough to see who's walking around with the hoods on. That's the man, the myth, the legend, getting set to go, coming up shortly. Gary Hunt, the 10-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. <laughs> Unbelievable. And watch what he does, even in this weather. But first, standing on the platform, which is mounted on the Institute of Contemporary Art, 90 feet, 27 meters off the Boston Harbor, is Nikita Fedotov, the independent athlete, 28 years old, enters this season, coming off a very consistent last season in 2022 with five top six finishes, including a third in Copenhagen. Very strong-minded diver. Reverse three somersaults with three twists. This is a dive that needs a lot of strength on takeoff.
Finley smokes one into the harbor. Stefan, who coaches many of the athletes from Canada and other countries, he likes it. The water depth, by the way, seven meters, about 16 to 20 feet, Joey, depending on the tide, but Nikita Fedotov putting one down. Now that was well worth the wait. You can see he took a long time to get off the platform, probably feeling pretty nervous. Now the thing that I love about Nikita Fedotov, I've seen him take some hard hits in the past, but he's very resilient. He says, no, I'm not gonna give up there. I'm gonna get back on the horse and do it again. But this particular dive gets so heavy. Big degree of difficulty, 5.1. It's doing it reverse, facing forwards, moving forwards, rotating backwards. But if he did that dive backwards, he would have much less degree of difficulty. <laughs> That's a tough one. Stefan is very, very pleased with that dive. Put a lot of work into his training yeah. over the last six months. Stefan does a great job with many, many athletes. You will see that along the broadcast. But he gets a 122 on that dive. So Fedotov, 407, moves into the lead ahead of David Kulturi. A lot of dives breaking over 400 already. High standard. Catalan Peretta getting ready. You're wondering where that is. That's the rooftop of the ICA Institute of Contemporary Art, located in South Boston in the Seaport District. And Aiden Heslop, last year's winner here, 21 years old. He gets set to go, but right now, warming up. Get ready for the 10-time King Kakili Trophy winner, the most decorated cliff diver of all time, Gary Hunt of France. For those new to the sport, this is the Kelly Slater, Michael Phelps, Tom Brady of cliff diving. This guy is amazing. He just did a backflip on the platform. He did? I don't know if yeah. I can see that. He did his little handspring. <laughs> Go, folks, the inventor of this dive, the triple quad. Three somersaults, four twists. Let's twist it up. And evaporating into the water once again, and you are looking at the reason why he's a 10-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. It's always the greats that make it look so easy. Everything is smooth, the takeoff is nice. The twist, oh, look at that, a round of applause. This guy Great is, appreciation. He's the most chill, too. He I, is. We, we saw him in the lobby of the hotel last week. He's just in there reading the book. Yep. And then he's juggling behind the scenes just, before he dives. He's just chilling. <laughs> he's but let just, me tell, oh, there's the backflip, oh, there you go. Multi-talented. <laughs> but he is actually a very, very talented individual. Here's the triple quad. Very first person in the world to perform this dive. So as we were saying before, 10 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series titles. So folks, it's going to take about a little more than 11 years to beat the title. <laughs> Brazil, yeah. Right? To beat that he's, record. He's How are we going to do it? Who's going to be the GOAT for a long time? Yeah. Look, at, look at the contrast right there. You see the building in the background. Look how many stories yeah. he's dropping. Good point. Eight-story equivalent. So if you're standing on the balcony, look down. That's what it's going to feel like. Easy for us to stand here and watch it. These guys are all good friends. They all respect each other, especially when it comes to cliff diving. Not an easy sport, very dangerous. 425-50 when you add all four scores together. Gary Hunt into the lead. Katalin Peretta, who we mentioned earlier, is just super strong along with a few of the other athletes. Yeah. Some off-season training. Uh, you know, you'd think, well, what do cliff divers do? They just go dive all the time? No, nope. they do a lot of behind-the-scenes training and testing to get ready for the season. It takes a lot, Joe. You know that. You've been there. Yeah, he's a very hard-working athlete. Katalin Peretta works on his mind, works on his body, flexibility. This is a vertical jump test to see how powerful you are, okay? And that's really important in this discipline. It's all about being explosive. You need that in order to fit in those somersaults and twists in this extreme sport. And that explosiveness, and you'll see it, Joey, right, comes off of the platform itself. So the more you can get done right before you stop dropping, the better. 
especially this generation of athletes. I mean, you just need every little advantage you're looking for. So you need to train the strength conditioning as well as the speed. So strength plus speed equals power. And this man has power. He just looks like a cliff diver too. You know, I mean, if you didn't see that behind the scenes training stuff, you'd think he just like, lives on the top of a cliff. He like personifies, you know, he what personifies Before he though. has his coffee, he'll just like fly off a cliff in the morning and hang out all day. Yeah. <laughs> Oldest extreme sport in the world. It is. Taking a deep breath, visualizing the dive. You need to picture the dive in the mind perfectly to help you execute the dive. Here's a guy. Here's a guy who has placed no worse than fourth during the last season of 2022. Finished the year strong with two straight podiums, capping it off in Sydney, Australia. See what he can do at the first stop here of six, live from Boston. Four double. Turning backwards. So that's uncharacteristic right there. Great in the air, Joey. But again, explain to those new to cliff diving about the entry and how important that is to not have that splash. And why did that happen? Look, it's so easy to over rotate on the dives, as we explained early with Alexei Prigrov. Sometimes a little bit too much power. Actually, Catalan has been underplaying his dives a little bit. So I think he's made a slight over correction on this particular dive as well. But again, what do the judges look for? They've got to look for the takeoff. Is it powerful? What is the form like? Are the legs together in the air? The last thing they see is the entry, okay? So we need to be as vertical as possible, but on the positive. I love the jump. As we said before, very powerful. Beautiful deep pike position with the legs straight. Holding on a little longer than he normally would. And then you can see here an over rotation. So he goes past that vertical line. So that's the moment you gotta be very alert and really stretch the body out as much as you can, but you have to catch that early. How, how scary is this? You've been at the top of a 90 foot platform, 27 meters. How scary is it? It is. I mean, I used to wake up the morning before the competition, super nervous, really hard to eat breakfast, right? I, I really had to force myself to eat. I knew I needed energy, but I didn't feel like it. You're waking up thinking about the dive over and over. And that entry right there, reflecting in the scores by the five judges, the high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So, Kathleen Peretta of Romania, not going to be happy with this one, moves into fourth place. When you add all four dives together, 396.30. A reminder, three dives happened yesterday. They all count. Today is the fourth and final round. So right now it is Gary Hunt in the number one spot with a 425.50. Fedotov in second with his 407. The other person over the 400 mark, David Kolturi, sitting in podium position thus far. Preda, you just saw right there, not going to be on the podium today. Sits fourth. And we have four divers remaining, including one American, James Lichtenstein. This guy, what a story. One of the great ones from last year made a debut and then he earned a third place podium finish and only his second appearance on the World Series. Went on to secure a permanent diver spot for this season. And Joey, I don't think anyone's ever done that in such a short period of time. I mean, yeah, he came onto the scene bursting with yeah. energy and dynamic diving. So folks, uh, you're in for a real treat with this what we, dive. What's he doing? Uh, Something big? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. ready I'm ready. this one. <laughs> Okay, folks, James Lichtenstein, back quint somersault. If you don't know what quint means, it means a back five somersaults. Here we go. Talking about the flipsters and the twisters. This is all about rotations. And, and, and you and I were talking to Gary Hunt yeah, yeah. about this, and he was yep. like, I, I wouldn't even do five. Yeah, they were asking him about James, and they said, what do you think about James's diving? He's like, I, I wouldn't do I, that I wouldn't. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're talking uh, about uh, a guy uh, who's won right. 10 World Series titles. And he's like, no, no, you can have that one. All right, but here that, we go. Yeah, this shows you how confident he is with aerial awareness. Look at the tariff 5.3 flashing in red. That's your degree of difficulty scale on the left-hand side of the screen. So keep an eye on that. So the maximum being 6.6, .6, you may see later this season. 
James Lichtenstein, 28 years old of the United States, now a permanent diver on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Five somersaults. A lot going on, and he puts it down. Wow, look at that dive. That is, without a doubt, one of the coolest dives to watch in the sport of cliff diving. And he's got the fist out. And that is when you have that incredibly relieving feeling after the dive. You're so pumped up, full of nervous energy, and that sense of satisfaction of completing five somersaults and then performing it like that. That is just incredible. James Lichtenstein. How do you know where you are? Uh, that's a good question. Ready, let's watch this. He'll count the somersaults. Watch his head here. One, One. two, three, four. So after he sees the water for the fourth time, that's his cue to come out of that ball shape, okay? You can see it here, orientating himself. Flick the head back. One, again, two, head moving again. Three, head moving again, four. And then you kick here and you put your head back and you say, there is the water. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see the sky. You don't want to see the building. You want to see what's below you, okay? I mean, he's doing this in three seconds right there. 85 kilometers per hour, 53 miles per hour, 10 Gs of physical force, Joey. I mean, you have to go feet first, and that's a big question we always get. Yeah, they, that you do from those feet. So the legs are the biggest muscle in the body. Okay, they can withstand the impact. Hands first, mm -mm, can't do it. All right, James Lichtenstein of the USA. Three remain after him, a bunch of eights. So again, he will get his third round scored at a 127. So 418.20 for the American Lichtenstein. He will move into second on the podium for now. Gary Hunt holds down the top spot. Fedotov on the podium in third right now. Kulturi bumps down to fourth place. Aiden Heslop coming up after our next diver. You can see the focus. These guys concentrate and think, think things through minutes before the dive, but this is Carlos Jimeno, the 33-year-old Spaniard. Okay, folks, this is the battle of the quint. Exact same dive as James Lichtenstein. Did he change? Because he usually just does an arm stand up. That's right. Switched it out because of the weather today. So exact same dive. Battle of the quint. Who wins? So Jimeno answers with a quint. And Lichtenstein <laughs> likes it. He's like, you, I, you I know what you're feeling, dive. buddy. I know what you're feeling. Yeah, and yes. he's fired up. Carlos Jimeno has come into this season with a plan in supreme physical condition. His body language, he's just looked the part. We saw him diving few weeks ago and he was just on fire and a lot of people were saying hey watch out for Carlos Jimeno and he's chasing his first ever podium in a Rebel Cliff Diving World Series stop and with diving like that he is in the running. He lit it up at the World Aquatics High Diving World Cup last week placing second ahead of Gary Hunt and you called it before we even arrived to that competition and that was a huge deal for him and a big confidence builder standing taller than Gary Hunt on a podium. Not many people do that. So impressed. So impressed. So what will the judges think of this one? Five judges, the high and the lower toss. 132.50. You add that together and kaboom! Carlos Jimeno, his first podium on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series with two to go guaranteed a minima of bronze. What a wild competition. Fantastic. An 
in between last week and this week, you said it a couple more times to me, Joey. <laughs> you said, just keep an eye on Jimeno. Yep, yep. All right, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. I will. You can just see it, though. You can see in the body language, the way they yeah. dive, the way they carry themselves. It's just it's like a feeling. Fantastic. So Jimeno on the podium, and will it hold to the top spot? Because that is a big score, 441.50, two more to drop. And that, including Aiden Heslop and Konstantin Popovich. Heslop, the winner here last year. At 20 years old, he became the youngest male diver ever to win a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series single competition. That is his girlfriend, Molly Carlson. We're going to see her dive shortly. She won here last year as well. A guy who's grown up idolizing Gary Hunt. Probably still does. Who doesn't? Folks, he's going to need eight and a half and the judges to take the lead. He went quick. A lot of twisting. Aiden Heslop now delivers a dive. What do you think of that, Joey? Well, always impressive. So he's following suit with Gary Hunt. The triple quad, that suits him. He's one of the athletes that prefers those twisting dives. He was actually working on it. He actually did it at the previous stop, doing a back quad, quad twist. But he was struggling a lot with the legs pulling apart of the air. That tells you how much force there is when you're twisting and rotating in the air. Forget hitting the water. So his legs were pulling apart in the air, but still a mighty fine dive. The parts that I like about Aiden Heslop's diving is his twisting ability. He's so fast. He jumps up and he gets into that action really quick. When you see it in real time, it's just a blur the way he whizzes through those twists. See the scuba divers rushing towards there. We've got a nervous wait. As I said before, he's going to need eight and a half from the judges wow. to take the lead. Really clean out the twist, honing in on the water. It's so easy to make those little miscalculations. A little short there, a little bit on the chest. Not sure if he's going to get the scores. Cold outside, 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Runs over to. The hot tub warming up, and it doesn't cut it for the lead. 429 to 0 after four rounds of diving. So Heslop in second. He's guaranteed a podium. But the big story, Carlos Jimeno of Spain still in the top spot. One diver remaining in the men's competition before we move over to the women's fourth and final round dive. It is Konstantin Popovich coming back from an injury last season. He was on a run. He was on a tear last season, Joey, and had a shot at winning the King Kaakili Trophy. But an injury in Sisakon, Switzerland, knocked him out for the whole year. And it didn't look like a huge crash, but enough to take him out. It did. And actually, as a matter of fact, he punctured his lung. So. Imagine that, he's got to recover from a punctured lung. Okay, that takes a lot of time in its own right. And then he's got to get back to training and then stand on the platform. We saw him take the win at the World Aquatics World Cup just a week ago. I believe that's also a pulmonary contusion mm -hmm. in my non-med school time. All right, here we go. Jimeno, your leader on the left-hand side. Konstantin Popovich. This is big. The only arm stand dive that we've seen in this fourth and final round. It's incredible he's chosen this dive. Watch this. Seconds. Folks, look at the degree of difficulty. 6.0. Look at the scale. Wow. Ramping it up. Look at the flag in the background. You got the wind, you got the rain, you got gusts. Crowd just in more of this dive. He's wobbling around. And he handles it yeah. nicely. Konstantin Popovich. Wow. Brilliant Whoa. dive. Smoking the entry. Alexei Prigorov Luxig. Everybody loves that one. 10,000 fans on hand here in Boston. And everybody was nervous watching him doing an arm stand, 90 feet, 27 meters above the Boston Harbor. Konstantin Popovich, you are a supreme athlete, mentally strong, physically strong, highly skilled. This, 
has got to be a performance that he will remember for a long time and all of us to remember as well. Oh, a supreme handstand, perfectly balanced in the wind, using all the force that he has to get into the twist. And this is where he's got to dig deep. This is where the dive gets heavy. Oh. Bit of a split in the legs. Some deductions from the judges there. The boy, oh boy, did he clean up the entry, the disappearing act into Boston Harbor. <laughs> Pretty chilly. And will, very, will, will very, very tough. This? Will they catch this little break right there? And once again, the judges looking at the execution of the dive, not the degree of difficulty. Then they multiply it by the tariff. There's viewers out there saying, who cares? The guy just... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. I don't care. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Carlos Semendo, <laughs> what a big day for him. Konstantin Popovich of Romania. What a comeback for him after being out most of the season. And he has a 10 by the Canadian judge, Olivier Morneau. Three nine and a halfs and a nine. He'll throw out the 10, a nine and a half. Regardless, 171 on that dive. And that means first place, 492.90. Romania's Konstantin Popovich wins the first stop of the 2023 season. And incidentally also breaks the highest competition score record as well. And you don't see Costa smile too often, but that is a well-deserved smile. And, and he held that before with 481.50. That was the score he got in Bosnia last season, but he breaks his own record. What a big day for the man, 50 points ahead. <laughs> Popovich blistering the field, but congratulations, Carlos Jimeno with his first ever Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series podium, and Aiden Heslop continues to be consistent. So tough to knock Gary Hunt off the podium, but Hunt right in there in fourth. Lichtenstein of the United States is the top American in fifth, and Fedotov, again, once sitting in the top six, that guy is so consistent. Colturi with a nice job getting in seventh place. Preda Paredes, Guzman, Garcia, Prigorov rounds out the top 12. The women are coming up next here in Boston with their fourth and final dive. Great round for the men. So many scores over 400. All right, let's send down to David O'Queeve. He's with our winner. Costa, it's all come to this moment. So begin with congratulations and talk us through that fourth and final dive. Well, you know, it's uh, it's my new favorite dive. Um, I mean, my handstand has been always my favorite dive. This is a new dive uh, in my repertoire, uh, but I'm, I'm really glad I'm getting the, at the point that I'm mastering the dive. Uh, that's my goal, to master this dive and uh, keep it like this uh, pretty much uh, every competition. And obviously you're coming back from a big injury. Talk us through that journey and how good this must be. Well, you know, that injury made me who I am today. Uh, stronger and, you know, more focused than uh, craving for, uh, for better of me. So what can we expect to see throughout the rest of the series? I don't want to talk too much. I just want to focus on what I have to do. Uh, hopefully uh, the, the season will go smooth like uh, this competition. Congratulations again. Thank you. Great comeback. That it is. And it takes a while to master those particular dives. So he took some hard knocks, but now he's finally got it in tune. So you can look at the weather from the previous day. I mean, that is just <laughs> night and day. It's like diving during the day and then all of a sudden diving at night time. But all four scores count, and he just did not miss a beat in this competition. I mean, you could just see that determination in his eyes coming into this season. He knew what he wanted to do. And once again, to reiterate, coming back from injury and then to dive like that, to block out the memory of that bad landing, puncturing his lung as a reminder, and then doing that here today. Konstantin Popovich, you deserve the win here in Boston. This is his fifth career World Series win, 12th podium in only 18 starts. So he's got it going on. Great way to set the pace for the 2023 season. And Carlos Jimeno giving him a congrats as he gets his first World Series podium. Getting set for the women's competition here in Boston, capital city of Massachusetts, located in the Northeast area of the United States. 
first the medal ceremony for the men Aiden Heslop flower ceremony flower ceremony medals flowers all kinds of stuff I guess you can't say hardware because the flowers are soft no. that's very nice Trace. Carlos Jimeno he's got to be excited yeah we called it didn't we great stuff that's what you want to see new faces on the podium three deserving podium places for these gentlemen. So, Konstantin Popovich of Romania, gold. Carlos Semeno of Spain, the silver. Aiden Heslop of the UK, taking bronze here at the first stop of the 2023 season of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And the first World Series standings of the year. Rolling out right now, it is Popovich with 210 points in Carlos Semeno, 160 of Heslop with 130, and so on and so forth. Six total competitions in the 2023 season. And remember last year, it came down to the final stop in Sydney. So yeah. this is just to give you a good understanding that it's gonna take all events to determine who's gonna be the 2023 King Ka'akili Trophy for 2023. And this is the highest scoring dive, individual dive, Joey, which is new that 10 more points will be awarded to their overall. That's right, so you got 200 points for the competition win and the extra 10 points to 10, and that may add up. That may pay dividends towards the end of the season, you know? It's a long season, hard on the body, but that is exactly what you want to do. Have a little bit more pressure on the other athletes with that extra 10 points, making it for an exciting season. Yeah. That'll help out once again. The women are coming up next with their fourth and final dive. But first, first time ever on the podium, Carlos Jimeno, who's down on the dock with David O.C., Dave. Carlos, other than being absolutely freezing, how are you feeling right now? You must be on top of the world. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is a dream come true, really. You know, I'm working very hard for this moment. Uh, I moved to, to Madrid. I was training there, my new dive. We have a platform of 12 meters and 15 meters that helped me a lot to reach uh, my new dive that I did Queen Summersal back and Hanstan with four and a half and performing this well. I'm just so happy. Uh, yeah, to the opportunity to be here. Cheers to all the crowd. Thank you so, so much for coming. Uh, yeah, look forward for the next time. So we're seeing new dives and a new Carlos. What has gone into that training? You look like you're in phenomenal shape at the moment. Yeah, man, healthy life. Yeah, I lost also 88 eight kilos. So yeah, you need to get in shape to do this sport. Now I feel lighter, I feel strong. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for everything. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thanks, Dave, and congratulations to Carlos Jimeno. Second place here in Boston at the season opener. getting set for the women but first Joey let's take a look at your methods of motion this year talk about the big change for this season in the competition format explain what it means to the divers well Trace I've got to say this the athletes are definitely gonna to have to show a lot of versatility and uh, before we dig deeper so let's explain the rules and the five Different takeoff directions the athletes are going to have to choose from. Okay, so you always have to do different takeoff directions. Okay, so the first one will be the front takeoff. So facing forwards, rotating forwards from the platform, then standing backwards, rotating backwards and away from the platform. Then it's reverse, facing forwards, moving forwards, then rotating back towards the platform. Inward is next, standing backwards, throw those arms in towards the platform to continue with the rotation. Then it's the arm stand. Well, this impressive takeoff speaks for itself. So folks, the rules have evolved over the years since we started the World Series. From 2009 to 2010, we only had three dives with a minimum of two different takeoff directions. The following decade, we stepped it up to four dives, but still keeping with a minimum of two different takeoff directions. But now in 2023, we have four dives and four different takeoff directions. And to reiterate, they will now have to demonstrate a lot more versatility in their skill sets. The analogy we 
would be, would be like a tennis player that normally plays with the right hand, now has to play with both the left and the right hand. So the athletes must be truly adaptable and versatile in the cliff diving scene in 2023. So you need to be a multi-dimensional diver now. The positive is that we get to see a bunch of new and different dives. Moving on to the women, like the men, they had three rounds of diving earlier. So let's take a look back on how things went down before their fourth and final dive. On again, on a much nicer day yesterday. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's unbelievable watching this footage, isn't it? Yeah, so there's the reverse double. So because of that rule change, Molly had to learn this particular dive and she really set the tone to take the lead after round one. The required dive round, the more simple and graceful maneuvers. And <laughs> Her mom and sister liked it. A beautiful dive by the champion. Rhiannon and Iflan tip for tap with Molly Carlson take the lead after round two. And this is round three, stepping up the degree of difficulty. And then Rhiannon and Iflan finds herself in a f familiar position to be in the lead. So she'll be the last person, the last woman to stand on the platform to cap off the competition. The ICA building, the Institute of Contemporary Art located in South Boston, the Seaport District, established in the year 1936. A lot of buildings now in that area, overlooking the Boston Harbor waterfront. Massive glass walls providing a nice panoramic view of the harbor. An incredible building hosting the best cliff divers in the world. A great shot, the weather getting better by the minute. As we look at the running order for the women's fourth and final round, you mentioned it earlier, Joey, after three rounds, it's the lowest score that will run first in Susanna Fish of the United States. Here, Schmidt Bauer diving well. She'll run number three. And you get in to the top divers, including America's Ellie Smart, Amy Harrison of Canada, of Canada, her teammate Jessica McCauley, and then Zantia Panisi of Australia, Molly Carlson of Canada, Rhiannon Iflin. So the Aussies sandwiching in the Canadian Molly Carlson in the running order. So Iflin will dive last as we look at 10,000 fans pouring in. We thank them for joining us. Trace Worthington alongside Joey Zuber, if you just joined us. Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, fourth and final round action from the Boston Harbor. It's the first of six stops, a chilly day, 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. We looked at the men's competition. The platform, 27 and a half meters, 90 feet off the water. The women's platform is 21 meters, 70 feet. Absolutely massive. Still a long drop into the Boston Harbor. 12 women and 12 men. Great men's competition won by Konstantin Popovich. Ameno won the silver. Aiden Haslop of the UK winning the bronze. Now it's time to settle who will be top three on the women's side. We'll kick it off with Susanna Fish of the United States from Minnetonka, Minnesota, only 21 years old, made her debut last season in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is only her second appearance on the World Series. She was introduced to the sport after following Ellie Smart on Instagram. We'll see Ellie shortly. And then she switched to a diving club that Ellie coached. That's how she got into the sport. Huge fan of Ellie's. And now she's in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Pretty impressive how quickly she's transitioned from diving to cliff diving. That's a leap up from 10 meters, 33 feet, all the way up to 70 feet. That ain't easy, let me tell you. Puts it down, the first of 12 women, Susanna Fish. It has to be nerve-wracking, Joe. You're 21 years old. You're in your second yeah. Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Like you said, you graduated from 10 meters all the way up to this height of 21 meters, and you have 10,000 folks out there watching. Early on in your career, it's even more difficult because you don't have the repetitions and the numbers. Like, Rhiannon's had more competition than anyone else. Now, she's always nervous as well, but the more experience, you do get a little calmer, and you can start to react and make those split second adjustments coming out of the twist. That's the relieving moment of the dive. Especially when you're twisting, you've really got to feel your way in the air. Now that impact, now when it's cold, the impact tends to be a lot harder than 
warmer temperatures in the water. So you hear the athletes going, whoa, that was a brutal impact. Just a reminder, three rounds happened yesterday. This is the fourth and final round. Now, all four dives count across the board. You can see the scores from all four dives. That one is 74-10. Then we need to add them all together. You see that right there of 234 flat. He's going back to, to the top of the women's platform, 21 meters, 70 feet off the Boston Harbor. Attached to the ICA Institute of Contemporary Art Building is Yana Netsiarava. In her 32nd career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, packed with experience, I love the fact that she started in aquatics as a synchronized swimmer. How do you go from a synchronized swimmer to this high off the water? Like, you know what? I don't like being underwater anymore. I'm gonna, it's a bit like do that. Gary. Gary Hunt was a swimmer. Yeah. And he remembered like finishing his laps and looking at the divers going, that's way more fun. I'm going to take off the flipping. <laughs> but this sport is not for everybody. It does take a certain type of personality, some kind of will and drive. Speaking of drive, forward three somersaults, one and a half twist pike, and she's going to have to drive the takeoff as hard as she can to get the rotations around. There she goes. She goes quickly and just comes in a teeny bit short on that, but a nice dive by the independent athlete Yana Netsiarava. Joey, the depth of this water is seven meters, six, 16 to 20 feet. There's a tide that rolls in and out, so you gotta have a little bit of timing. You gotta keep an yeah, eye yeah, on that. Yeah, 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 you do. It's an interesting point. So generally speaking, they try to start the competitions an hour before high tide, and you finish about an hour after. You want that minimal tide difference. Why does that make a difference? Because obviously if the tide's going down, that means the platform starts getting higher. So sometimes you can have a situation towards the end of the competition, the platform might start to be to become higher. But he's and, that, gone. and just those few inches or a foot can make a huge difference. It can. Time. It can. I mean, if it's just three, you know, 30 centimeters or, I mean, half a meter is huge, actually. That can be the difference between getting a rip entry and being vertical or over rotating on the dive. Yana Nestriava, very experienced show performer as well, traveled the world, performing in various stunt shows and high diving shows. Seven podiums, no victories. Fifth was her best finish in the 2022 season. Still searching for her first ever Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series win. So, moves into third with a 237.50. Ironically, Iflin and Carlson still have the top scores and they haven't even taken their fourth and final round dive. Everybody's waiting for Ellie Smart. She's psyched to be diving in the USA, has many fans here, and uh, she caught up with Dave. Hi, Ellie. Here on your home turf, yes, the weather's not perfect, but what does it mean to be diving here? Oh my gosh, I am just so excited to dive here in my home country. It's not often I get to do it. And the crowd that came out today, despite the weather, is they're so enthusiastic. I actually think it might be one of the most enthusi enthusiastic crowds I've seen ever in my career. So I'm just so excited for today. And how about the new format with four different takeoffs? How has that affected your diving? Yeah, for me, I'm actually one of the only girls it didn't affect. I got to keep the same list. I actually chose to upgrade and do a new dive. So this year and today, I'm going to be doing a back double with four twists instead of three twists. So we're going to debut it here in my home country. Good luck in that fourth round. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. A lot of fans. And you know what, Joey? She has been bringing on a whole new generation of divers, especially in yeah. the United States. Yeah. She's such a passionate, passionate person, both, you know, her and her parents, so passionate about cliff diving and high diving and, and just want to see so many youngsters get involved in the sport. They've done a great job with it. Yeah, it's great to, to feed the next generation and to encourage them. She's encouraged and helped this one out. Iris Schmidtbauer, 28 years old of Germany. Great result last year, winning the European Championships. She re-earned her permanent diver spot on the World Series after losing it in 2021. Second highest degree of difficulty in the round. So once again, look at the left-hand side, 4.3, flashing red.
And Schmidt Bauer putting it down, her fourth and final round dive. She is third to go of 12, Joey. And what I think is interesting about Iris, she doesn't come from a professional diving background. Everyone would think that you have some type of background in diving to get involved in this sport. It's a great tale of perseverance and determination with Iris Schmidt Bauer. She just fell in love with the sport of cliff diving, and it's quite difficult. A lot of the divers come from gymnastics or started diving when they're like seven years old, 10 years old. She really started quite late in the piece, but she's done such a good job. And year by year, I'm seeing a lot of improvements and particularly with the takeoff and her entries now starting to hone in. And that's the part that becomes very difficult. She tended to just not quite find that vertical line, but very impressive here. Watch the arms how they have to swing up. That helps generate rotation. That's the twist. The arms come out quickly to stop the twist, entering the pike position. Nice tight pike as well. But European champion, step by step, she is improving. Well done, Iris Schmidbau, or Schmidty, as we say. Schmidty. Cold water, cold temps, not easy to get the bones warmed up before those dives. She's got a 92 on that. Adding it together with the first three rounds, 274.85. So Schmidt Bauer of Germany now in the top spot. Great shot once again here in Boston. The Atlantic Ocean, the Seaport District, and the ICA building, the Institute of Contemporary Art, 10,000 fans. And Joey, you see the platform. I mean, there's no railings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How scary is that walking out? Yeah, just a little bit. Especially with a little gust of wind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't even hold on to your pants. I mean, <laughs> they're not wearing them. <laughs> well, they're wearing a bailing suit. Hold on to the bailing suit. A bit of massive structure there. It's quite a, a feat to actually install the platform here at the ICA building. It's just the engineering alone behind the scenes. This is 20 year old Alisa Cassetti of Italy the youngest female diver on the start list today. Gaining some serious experience. Now, what's she doing there? Just guiding the rescue divers. So sometimes the divers, the athletes like to move the scuba divers into a position to help them see the water as well. And then get them to have the splash right in the spot. So any little advantage you can have, take it. And then you'll see the divers follow her down underwater. Boom, kaboom, wow. I tell you what, we, just, we talked about the Italian squad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alessandro De Rose helps them out. He's out this season with an injury, the legend. But I tell you what, some of the male divers, female divers in Alyssa Cassetti, they're coming on strong. And they come in with style. The Italians are known to have style and here in the sport of cliff diving. And they've got their own little trademark. They're working with the trampolinists. Marcus Stupner leading the charge. He hits the triple half. Watch the arms laying by the side in that last part. Makes the dive look so clean. And she just crushed that entry. Once again, look at that. The high rise buildings there. This is about the equivalent of a six story, beautiful pipe position. A bit of Mario Brothers in the background there to highlight the cliff diving. What a beautiful dive by Alyssa Cosetti. She was a basketball player before getting into cliff diving. Two yeah. sports that uh, kind of require a bit different. Yeah, how do you go basketball to cliff diving? <laughs> Their friends must be going, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, she'll keep three eighths. Those are multiplied by the degree of difficulty. 81.6 on that dive. So 277.40 when you all add up all four together. Cosetti of Italy now in the lead. from Boston, the first stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Six total stops this season, culminating in Auckland, New Zealand. All the divers trying to stay warm and getting set to watch Maria Paula Quintero, now a wild card diver from Colombia, 22 years old. We, we talked about her and you know she kind of is had a little bit of a roller coaster in her results and then joe you were like she's still only 22. yeah but she started when she was 17 so yeah. it feels like she's been on the series for a long time but she's still got a lot of time to improve and she's looking really good actually i have to say very focused big dive four somersaults here we go A lot of 
flipping going on by Maria Paula Quintero. And right there you see Miguel Garcia. We saw him dive earlier. That's actually her stepfather. She's got a whole big family here representing. But maybe something happened on that dive and into the just from the naked eye, Joey coming into the water. Yeah, yeah, break it down. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she was one of the, the first women in the world. Not one of, was the first woman in yeah. the world to do this dive. So this caught quad half. One. Coming around for the two, coming around for the three. I'm just going to look at the exit point. Now, she came out quite late. Okay. Now, that caused the over-rotation. You see the arms bending there. So, the orientation, the air awareness is key. It's quite tricky when you're rotating forwards. You have to feel that light, heavy sensation. She just missed that point. She needed to come out earlier to slow it down. Bunch of fives on that. So, she'll move into third with 270.45. Maria Paula Cantero of Colombia. And there's Mele Carpenter of the United States, earning a permanent diver spot this season. Only eight women earned a permanent diver spot. And it all started here one year ago in Boston. What a game changer. This third place finish turned a lot of heads. I think she was just completely stunned that she made the podium, but I was not shocked because we all know that she is a very, very capable diver. As a matter of fact, she has fantastic technique, good takeoffs, good twisting ability. Very multi-talented athlete as well. A climber, gymnast, show performer, and a great cliff diver. Here we go, back in Boston. Former NCAA Division I college coach and science teacher. Outside of diving, earned two bachelor's degrees, chemistry and psychology, and one master's degree in education. Fitting in some cliff diving in between. Deeper. Leads five and a half for first. Jonathan Perretta is looking on, spectating the women's side. The men are finished. Oh, beautiful dive in the air. Look good to me, Joey. Absolutely. Hair short of vertical. We'll go into more detail shortly. That was interesting. Hearing about Maylee Carpenter's parents, and she started show diving, and they seem to be more concerned with the water depth. So in some of the diving shows, they're only diving into a water depth of around about 9, 10 feet, 3 meters. Pretty scary. You've got to pull up pretty quickly. So they weren't, they weren't that concerned with the 70-foot with the dive. But what is the minimum? A lot of people do ask, ask us that. What's the minimum depth? Well, in the competitions, because they really need to focus on drilling the entry, so the minimum is 5 meters. So that's about 16 feet. Okay. Generally speaking, they're only going to go about 4 meters deep. Of course, the more vertical you are, the deeper you are. Once again, 70 kilometers per hour, hurtling their way down into these chilly temperatures into the Boston Harbor. Okay, the triple double, the triple means the triple somersault. She just did the twist at the beginning, one and a half, and then she completes another half twist at the end, the Barani. Just a tad short of vertical. And let me tell you, you feel it. If your neck is out just a little bit, you feel that punch in the chin. Pretty good dive, though, but there'll be some deductions for the entry. They're all feeling the cold weather, but the Bostonians are out in full force. The fans, weather not affecting them at all. They're watching the best cliff divers in the world launch into the Boston Harbor. So Maley Carpenter with that 90.30, adding the first three rounds together, 298.90, setting the pace and tone, now leading the way. Seventh to go on the list. He's got a lot of fans here. Ellie Smart, 27 years old, of the United States. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Let's go. Her family is here, and that's Julie. Robbie's always around, too. Her father, huge fans of the sport. In fact, her mom was texting me before we yeah, came yeah. on there. <laughs> and she's held. Highest degree of difficulty in this round, Joey. 
and the first time debuting this particular dive. Brand new, back to somersaults. Four twists, big degree of difficulty, 4.4. There's the heartbeat. Whoa, Ellie Smart. I just no. love that Ellie Smart is pushing the limits. Okay, the entry did not go her way. She was saying that she's not necessarily that competitive, but she does want to challenge herself. And I really respect Ellie Smart for doing that. First woman in the world to do that dive. Back to somersaults, four twist. And the orientation required for that dive is just remarkable. You've got to pick your moment. It's a scary, scary dive. Watch this, jumping up, she'll reach her arms up. She's going to be very careful here not to over-rotate. If you give it too much gas, you can completely overcook the dive. So you've got to do three and a half twists and then the brani at the end. So sometimes you're diving from heights of 21 meters or 20 meters, so you've got to make adjustments. She's trying to feel away in the air. Just needed to actually just wait a little longer and get the arms a, bit, a little squarer. She Nonetheless, needs. take a hat off. Oh, yeah. Debuting that new dive. I mean, you know, divers like Rhiannon Inflin are, are coming up soon. You've got to throw the big stuff out. you got to throw the difficult dives. Maybe if the tide was a little bit lower, maybe three feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 39 on that. So, judge's reflection. Not the dive Ellie Smart wanted on that. More competitions to come this season. Beautiful shot at the Boston Harbor. Fenway Park, the oldest original Major League Baseball stadium, still in use close by. A lot of the athletes and the staff crew went down there and saw a game the other day, and Carpenter still holding down the top spot from the United States with a 298.90. So again, if you just joined us, women's platform, 21 meters, 70 feet off the water. As we look at Canadian, Amy Harrison, 28 years old. She got everyone's attention last season. She broke out, speaking of difficulty, yeah. the quad half and also Norway. Ended up taking fifth place there. Remains her personal best. Tied up here, I spoke with her last week. She says she does a lot of fishing, Vancouver area. She's got a boat. See if she can get some big scores here, moving to the lead. She needs Seven halves and sevens from the judges. Just push into the lead. So there you go, Amy Harrison, her fourth round dive, putting it down into the harbor. She's got family here as well. Coach Dallas Ludwig standing there. Now, Amy Harrison came from a springboard diving background. And that's when you've got the uh, the boards that bend, and it's a much different style of diving. So Alexei Prigorov, for example, came from springboard diving. So it's a different technique to dive on that hard surface. And then, of course, to deal with the height difference once again. Pretty interesting. You see that uh, you, you talk about 10-meter platform divers. You see three-meter springboard divers, gymnasts. Rihanna Nifflin, who we're going to see shortly, with, came from a, a trampoline background, yep. um, which is really interesting in cliff diving you can to see a variety of sports applying. It is. So uh, I think the ultimate combination is high performance trampoline background with a high performance diving background. Put the sandwich together. That makes a great cliff diver. And if, and if you're watching it for the first time, you think everyone's got to be a teeny bit crazy no matter what sport you came from. Yep. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, I because, won't lie. Because you, you are crazy. Because you are, you know, yeah. and you came from cliff diving. Yeah, I'm a little bit hyperactive, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Zuber coming from your background. And you've done an amazing job with the sport, by the way. Congratulations and happy birthday to you. Thank you very and, much. Uh, it's fun to see everything grow and potentially high diving, perhaps yeah. in an Olympic sport someday. Yeah, it's been remarkable watching the journey starting off as a kind of underground niche sport and working away up to the point where we've got these incredible dives. I mean, a lot of the Olympic divers look at what these cliff divers are doing now and they are in absolute awe of the difficulty So Carpenter still in the lead with 298.70. So we have Jessica McCauley now. 
12 total World Series podiums since 2017, but looking to step on top of the podium box and a win for the first time in her career. Born in England, once represented the UK, then she moved to her father's country of origin, so now represents Canada. And there's Maley Carpenter on the left-hand side, warming up, leading the charge. Maley was number six to go. Jessica McCauley is number nine, so three remain after the Canadian. Xanthi Panisi, Molly Carlson, and Rhiannon Iflin up next. Jessica McCauley pumping up the audience. Her Jessica. boyfriend Vlad is here, her parents are here. Right there, flying the Canadian flag. Jessica McCauley in striking distance, taking the lead. Sevens from the judges. Love this dive, reverse triple tuck. Jessica McCauley dropping in. Joey, let's talk about it is cold outside right now for these divers. We're yeah, not yeah. seeing the entries that we normally see, but nevertheless, still pulling off some huge feats here. Not easy in cliff diving. No, 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 it's not indeed. But talking about style, she's very smooth. This is what I like to see in the sport of cliff diving. Everyone has their own little take on cliff diving, performing dives they like to perform. But look at those beautiful pointed toes, elegant, long and tall, lean lines, head back. I mean, it looked like the dive was really good, just a slight miscalculation in the entry. I mean, look at that. Just a hair off oh, the line, maybe bit. the arms out, and then a kabooming splash, but still not far off the vertical line. Coach Stefan, she's 178 centimeters tall, five feet, 10 inches. As you mentioned, Joey, beautiful lines in the air. Always fun to watch, Jessica McCauley. Moves into the top spot with 299.80 after you add all four rounds together. A reminder, three rounds happened yesterday. This being the fourth and final dive for the athletes. Three women remain here in Boston. Xanthia Panisi, Molly Carlson, and Rhiannon Iflin. So McCauley hopes to hang on to a podium position. Along with Maley Carpenter of the United States, young Alisa Cassetti of Italy in third. So whatever she ends up with three divers remaining, it's going to be a personal best for the youngster of Italy. So Xanthia Panisi ready to launch. Institute of Contemporary Art. Beautiful structure. Coming off a great 2022 season, hitting the podium twice and never placed outside of the top seven. 24 years old from Brisbane, Australia. Santia Panisi. Brisbane, home to the 2032 Summer Olympic Games. Former gymnast who took up traditional diving before getting into cliff diving. Here we go. We've got two more divers to come. She will be, oh, so nervous to see the scores from the judges. But by the looks of it, she's put herself in a great position. She's been so consistent. You can see her smiling. She looks happy with the dive. She's from my hometown, Brisbane. Oh, here we go. Back triple four, jumping up, half turn in, get into the pike, dig deep, see the water. And that's a relieving moment. Xanthia has just been such a hard-working athlete. Speaking of hard work, it starts right there in the takeoff. You've got to get it high, good elevation for the platform. Grab onto those legs. That's why they use the chamois. Sometimes the athletes can't slip out in the middle of their dive. Honing in on the water. Yeah, pretty impressed for Xanthia Panisi. 
There's grip, there's grip tape on the end of the platform, but not grip tape on their knees. No. <laughs> <laughs> Will she make the podium? It's not the day you want to wear sunblock, right? On your legs. 91 on that. There you go. Podium spot, 325-90. Panizzi in the number one position. How's that? Normally a slow start on the season, but guaranteed a podium position. Congratulations, Zanti Panissi. Getting down to the wire. Two women remain. We'll kick it off with Molly Carlson. Then we'll get into the GOAT, Rhiannon Iflin. Now, Molly Carlson, the winner here in Boston last year. And then after that, Rhiannon Iflin said, nope, I'll take over the number one spot. But <laughs> nevertheless, Molly Carlson with a string of second place finishes through the entire season. Very dominant and very capable of winning the King Kai Keeley Trophy. Yeah. If anyone can do it this season over Rihanna Nifflin, it is her. Yeah, she is no fluke. She's got a great technical background. They have an amazing high diving training facility in Montreal so they can high dive regularly. But you can't high dive too much because it does take the toll on the body. But I think with her coach Stefan, they found the right balance coming into the season here in 2023. She only started cliff diving three years ago and clearly has figured out the formula for success in a very short period of time. All right, thank you. Once again, you can use the buildings in the background as a reference how high they are off the water. Uh, right. <laughs> 21 meters, 70 feet. A new dive for Molly Carlson, so she's had to learn as a matter of fact, she's learned three new dives coming into this season. Inward triple half pike. Takeoff is essential on this dive. is just showing us why she is a formidable cliff diving athlete. Like a perfectly swished basketball into the harbor. Molly Carlson. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> wow, awesome. that was style, a huh? Tribute, tribute to the Celtics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great sporting city here in Boston. They're being treated to some mighty fine cliff diving. Now, you actually saw Molly just having one foot on the platform, waiting for the perfect moment to make sure the wind died down. She held on, took off, honed in, and pow, down she goes for a rip entry. And it's amazing when you're on site, when you hear those entries just tearing through the water. Quite a loud sound, as a matter of fact. Good show of camaraderie yeah. between all the athletes. Zanti Panissi congratulating Molly Carlson, the score. Mother Cats here, sister Megan. They'll like those scores. Bunch of eight and a halfs across the board. That ought to do it. Once again, all four dives, all four rounds added together. So with that 102 and her first three rounds, 346-20, Carlson. Now in gold medal position and hope she can lose that second place streak and be back on the top of the podium once again here in Boston another season. I love it, so exciting. One more diver to come. 10 World Series podiums in her 13 starts. Only Rihanna Nifflin has that type of podium strike percentage. The most dominant force in women's competitive cliff diving coming out of last three years. Rhiannon Nifflin's only been off the podium once. I mean, six-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. It's her 38th start. Never missed a start since her debut in 2016. She's never been out of the top five in the 37 events she's competed in, in FYI. She's only been fifth place once and fourth place once. And all the rest of the stops in her career are top threes. She's got all the right skills. 
mentally strong, fantastic technique, and a great competitor. Her win streak was broken last year here by Molly Carlson, so she's trying to get win number seven in a row. And get ready for the awesome Aussie diving sensation. Hey, I've heard that Re one before. <laughs> you can recycle it if you want. We're recycling it right here. <laughs> new stop, New Year. Ridiculous on that entry. Rhiannon Iflin showing you why she is a six-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Kaboom. But when you're standing on the platform, you're the last diver. You know you have to nail the dive. Do you know how much pressure is on your shoulders in that moment? I mean, you must be thinking to yourself, don't stuff it up, don't stuff it up, but no. <laughs> she is so mentally strong. Her wrist really, it's just so incredible how stylish she is. I mean, this is perfect technique. Look at the takeoff. Powerful, perfect distance from the platform, good tuck position. And this is where the trampolining comes in. Those arms laid flat against the thighs, then coming out wide to stop the twist. And just, I think her timing is just absolutely bang on. Awesome. Makes it look easy. The greats always make it look easy, right? <laughs> just smooth. Like yeah. watching, you know, Roger Federer or Serena Williams. It's just fluid motion and just smooth transition. And mentally consistent. I think that's the biggest thing yeah. with Rhee, who our wonderful production team and our family behind the scenes calls her Rhiannon Clifflin. Yeah. That's going to be the new one of this year. One. Yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. I can't take credit for it. Our crew. No, no. Rhiannon Iflin, 10450 on that 36835. Rhiannon Iflin once again does it again. Wins gold and kicks off the season with a victory. Iflin now 36 podiums out of 38 starts. That is a 95% podium strike ratio and her 31st win. She just said, I'm back. We had the competition <laughs> and Molly won the World Cup in Fort Lauderdale, but uh, it's got a fighting spirit, let me tell you. We had some great conversations with her last week, and yeah. she was talking about when she's got to really kick in mentally, because as you get older, the body starts kicking in and you start feeling it, so she's like an experienced golfer, really needs to mind the, the mind the takeover, but I'll tell you what, she looks pretty strong to yeah, me. Yeah, competition-wise. Rhiannon Ifland winning gold here in Boston, Molly Carlson with a second place finish and a silver Xanthia Panisi on the podium again. So Macaulay off the podium in fourth, Maley Carpenter, the top American in fifth, and Elisa Cassetti, the youngest in the field, with a personal best sixth place finish. Watch out for her. And there you go, Ira Schmidtbauer in seventh. Right on down the line, Ellie Smart, the 10th place finish, and young Susanna Fish of the United States rounding out the 12 women here in Boston at the first stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series 2023. Let's check in with David O.C. He's down on the dock, Dave. Three. Congratulations. Last year, Boston escaped you, but this year you managed to come back with a vengeance. Yeah, last year I uh, was neck and neck into the, the last round, uh, and it was uh, really exciting. This year I didn't want it that way. Um, you know, I wanted to come back and uh, take back that top spot on the podium. So I'm super stoked. Like, today was a tough day for us all. Like, you know, there's no lying about that. Like, the weather conditions were tough. It was cold. There was a lot of nerves up there. So, you know, it was, it was good to get through it nice and safe and um, and well. <laughs> and at the end of last season, you spoke about how the gap might not be closing, but definitely the other divers are catching up. Do you think this is going to be the hardest season yet? Yeah, look, I'm not sure. Like, uh, I know coming into this season, like, my goals have shifted a little bit. Um, I don't want to carry so much pressure uh, like I did last season. Like, I want to enjoy it a little bit more and um, let the results come from that. But, yeah, most certainly I think this is going to be a tough season. Like, it's always a tough season, but I think uh, this year is, uh, is going to be neck and neck, and that's exciting. We'll enjoy the win. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Great words about enjoying the experience and as a byproduct, hopefully you have great results, good attitude. 
So here's round one. So the thing that's really interesting about Rihanna, and she does actually change things up quite a lot. So she has her required dives, but she mixes it up. So she's, speaking of which, versatile. And that's what you need to be this season. Got a large range of tricks in the bag. I mean, that dive was almost worth a 10 in round two. And then you step it up to the optional dive rounds. When we say optional, it means optional degree of difficulty. So you just push the limits to see how many somersaults and twists you can perform. And hopefully you can nail the entry and nail the entry she did. And then that contrast between day one and the sun <laughs> and then coming into these cold conditions. And it's hard. I mean, it, I'll be honest, you don't really feel like diving in these kind of conditions when it's cold in the water, cold outside, strong winds. You have to really psych yourself up to get in competition mode. And that's what she does well. She knows how to flick the switch, put on the poker face. Now she's nervous, she's always nervous on the platform. Puts on that poker face or game face as we call it, and that helps her perform. But well, that's what's so great about cliff diving, Joey. I mean, it's the oldest extreme sport. Yeah you know, in history, and it, yeah. it, 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 you do come out in the elements, and that's that's part of it, the challenge. The divers love the challenge, and you know, the divers that don't enjoy particularly maybe being outdoors are indoor divers and traditional divers, but yeah. these athletes, they love the challenges, especially Rhiannon Nifflin, and these three right here is Cynthia Panisi from Australia with the third, and Molly Carlson there on the left-hand side, the Canadian sandwiched in between the Aussies. And Rihanna Nifflin, another win. Rihanna Nifflin relishing the challenge. As a matter of fact, sometimes she actually says she does like the conditions when it's a little wavy or windy. You know, she likes to push herself and... She was also telling us she still is very scared when she gets up there. Oh, She's yeah. got a great poker face. They all are. If you think these athletes don't have fear, you are wrong. They do. Every time they get up there, they understand what's at stake. So the points, Rihanna Nifflin, clearly. At the top, 210 points. And Molly Carlson, 160. Xanthi Panisi in third to kick off this 2023 season with 130 points. So 210 points. It's usually 200 for the win, but she got the 10 bonus points. Why? She had the top individual dive score. So that's a new thing this year, is getting an additional 10 points on your overall series point list. So here's that dive. It made the difference. Particularly if you tie with someone, if you have the higher degree of difficulty, you'll get that, uh, that award for the best scoring dive. And that'll add up by the end of the season. It can. You know, I mean, it especially can if Reed gets it every time, let's yep. say. I mean, that, that's a lot of points. And if someone else, let's say, matches the same number of wins or second places, but it might just come down to that 10 points at the end of the season to see who will seal the King Kai Achille Trophy. So five more stops to go in the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series. Yeah, and one of those five stops is in a very beautiful place. We go from here in Boston, we head over the Atlantic in just a couple weeks. Keep the popular city vibe rolling as stop number two of the World Series heads back to Paris, France. Debuted there last year and it's the most iconic backdrop the entire season, no doubt about it. That, of course, the famed Eiffel Tower. As if a, you know, photographing Joey the Tower alone isn't spectacular enough. Now tourists can add a famous cliff diver to the imagery. Thousands and thousands expected to attend along the riverfront. June 18th is when it all goes down. So a beautiful day in Boston, Joey. This, yep. what an amazing event. It was, one to remember. Gosh. Big congratulations to Konstantin Popovich and Rihanna Nifflin for nailing their dives, walking away with the wins. Most importantly, they're off to a great start in the 2023 season. Until then, and heading to Paris, we have Joey Zuber and David O.C. and our entire production team. I'm Trace Worthington. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone.